Okay, we are live. Um, hello and a big welcome to everyone who has joined this session live today and to everyone who's listening to this recording or watching the broadcast live on Facebook. So before we get going, as always, I love to just select a fun cartoon from one of my favorite cartoonists, The Awkward Yeti, which is theawkwardyeti.com. And I'm just going to move my slide along here. I can do that. Uh, here we go. There we go. So I love these cartoons and I just thought this was appropriate for the wheel of life and our balanced discussion here. Um, heart and brain always at odds with each other. And as life coaches, that's something um, we probably deal with with our clients a lot. Okay, so I'm Emma Louise Elsie, as I hope you know from the Coaching Tools Company. I came across life coaching in 2003. 18 months later, I moved halfway around the world and I started a life coaching business. I had no idea that I would eventually live on a cottage on a rural island with five acres and that I would be running an online business from home. That really is the power of coaching and personal growth and self-development. So the Coaching Tools Company has been alive for 13 years now, and I have recently launched my passion, which is fiercekindness.com. I am truly grateful to live a life I love. With me today is Michaela Phillips, who works with me at the Coaching Tools Company, um, and she's helping with everything from questions to admin and technology. So she'll be monitoring the chat there. Um, and this is our third tools clinic. So as always, we want to hear what works and what doesn't. So please do feel free to give us any comments in the short survey at the end of the session today. It's just three questions, um, so it's very quick. Okay, today I am going to be sharing with you um, my favorite ways to use the wheel of life. We will also be breaking out into groups where you can share how you use the wheel of life with others. And if you don't already, how you might plan to use the wheel of life from what you've learned today. So we'll be doing some breakout groups. And then we have, if you'll excuse the pun, a really good challenge where we look at, see if we can find any ways where the wheel of life couldn't be used. And then we'll wrap up with your questions. So um, main question time at the end, but if you do have questions as we go along, feel free to stick them in the chat. If I see them, um, I will try and get to them, but I'm not guaranteeing that we do have questions at the end, but I will be looking at the chat here as well. We are aiming for 40 to 45 minutes in total, and it will depend on the questions you ask. So before we get started, if any of you have not got the chat box up on Zoom, because we will be using that, um, you can just move your mouse or tap your smartphone screen to see the black menu bar, and then you should be able to see a little a speech bubble with chat next to it and you can pop the chat up. Okay, so um, Michaela, let's get started with a quick poll and find out how often you use the coaching wheel or the wheel of life. And hopefully everyone can see that poll. Okay. Oh. Looks like a few people are still answering. Uh, looks like we are done. I'm going to end the poll here and show the results. There we go. So it looks like 31% uh, of you use the Wheel of Life regularly. 23% do not. Uh, 46, that's half of you, use it sometimes. So I hope maybe we'll get to 100% of you using it at least sometimes by the end of our session today. So I will close the poll down there. Awesome, that was fun. Okay, so there's our poll. Um, I'm going to switch over to talk about the Wheel of Life, which is why you're all here today. The Wheel of Life is, oh, I also might move on the slides here. Let's do that. There we go. Um, the Wheel of Life is probably my all-time favorite coaching tool. It has so many applications and adaptations, and I believe it can be used in any coaching situation. We'll see if that's true in a little bit. When I was coaching full time, I used the wheel with all my new clients. It's a really great way to get people thinking more broadly about their life before they set their goals. And it's also great to review with clients alongside the specific goals they came to you to get coaching around. 
The wheel is also a quick way to do a check-in with clients, especially if they come to a session without a clear goal. You can always say, let's do a quick wheel and see if something comes up. You can also use it in many other ways to clarify priorities, to delve deeper into any issue, and generally raise your client's awareness. It makes great homework. It's super simple. Um, And I've used the wheel in workshops and groups online. It's so easy to do, and it's a powerful visual. I think the wheel is something that is a powerful visual for humans generally, um, and it shows up in a lot of spiritual contexts. So my favorite four ways to use the wheel of life. My hands down, my favorite way to use the wheel of life is simply to measure progress. A lot of people think coaching is very intangible and it's hard to measure. So the wheel of life provides you with a very quick and easy way to measure progress. I would do a quick wheel, as I said, with all my clients when I start out with them. So then if you give it three, four months, you can come back and rescore the wheel. It's that simple. Um, I recommend a little tip is to rescore the wheel with a different pen and make a note. Um, The blue pen was one date and the red pen was a different date. And then you can compare the scores. And I, it's very rare that a score would go down on a wheel once they're coaching with you. Um, I, a couple of times, if the score went down, it was usually perhaps because they'd had a relationship breakup or lost their job or something had happened. So it's a great way to show progress in coaching and that they're happier with their lives. And it's a great way to make coaching more tangible. So what do you think? Does anyone do this already? Um, and what do you think of that idea? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the chat. So I call it the wheel of progress or to measure progress. Yep, Joan, loving the idea, that's great. Does anyone, I use it as a measurement stick every few sessions, perfect, Brian. So Brian already does that. Does anyone else already do that, to use it as a wheel of progress? Yeah, it is a great idea. Yeah, I agree, thank you. And yep, group sessions, yep, reinforcing um, progress. So it seems like a lot of you think it's a great idea. A couple of you are already doing it. Some of you do it in groups. So it's a great way just to show progress. And once your clients have done it once and then they do it again with you, it's quick because they know how to do it. They're like, oh yeah, just score it out of 10. Okay, so the next favorite way to use the wheel of life is with career coaching clients. Um, It's a great way to bridge the skills gap if someone wants to get a new job or promotion. So you would take a blank wheel. So that would be the one on the left here on the slide and ask your clients to list eight core skills that they need for their new role or to get a promotion. Now, if they don't know, then it's good to give them some homework to, to research and look into that job and come to the session with those eight things. So eight core skills they need for a new role or to get a promotion. And then ask them to label a blank wheel with those skills. And then they would score themselves out of 10 as to how they meet those requirements for the skills. So if a 10 would be, I fully meet those skills and a zero would be no experience or skill in that area. And then obviously as a coach, Um, Any low scores in a segment would be an area where your client could come up with a goal or an action to raise that score. And also consider the areas where they have high scores already. This is where your client could set a a goal that would really skyrocket them um, and really show off what they're capable of to prospective employers or a new role. And also remember that if we're already good at something, it feels really good to work on that. It's good for our confidence. So, That's a super easy way to use a blank wheel. What do you think of that idea? Who can think of a client they could do do this with? And type in the chat, I should have said that. Sally says she likes to see the imbalances and gaps. That's powerful because when you see where there's a gap, then you have a potential goal or something you can do to grow that. (laughs) Alejandra says, that's amazing. How come I never thought of this? Well, that's what we're here for today. And it is a good way with a, to prospect a client. Yes. Oh, wow. So Brian says he's got a client as of today, a new client who has a new position is trying to figure out how to move forward. So it doesn't necessarily even have to be um, how to get a job. If you're in a new job and you're perhaps feeling a little overwhelmed or stuck, it's a way of kind of having some constructive, constructive um, activities you can do to fill those gaps. Okay. Yeah. 
That's great. Use it for self-care. Oh, yes. Well, that's a very good idea. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to the next one, which is kind of self-care, but it's kind of the opposite as well, the wheel of stress. So if you have a stressed client, this is a super easy way to use the coaching wheel. Again, take a blank coaching wheel and label those eight segments with the eight things that are most stressing them out at the moment. And then they literally just score each stress area out of 10, where zero is it's not stressing them out at all, and 10 is the highest possible stress. And now you will have a wheel which shows you what's stressing out the client and how much it's stressing them out. And now you can coach them. Um, you can go deeper into an area and you can also help them create an action plan. So what do you think of this one? Um, I'd love to see if you could share a reaction or emoji in the chat just to do something a little bit different. So on your bar, there might be a little option to do an emoji or a reaction and we can put um, or a smiley face in the chat. Let me do that here. I'm going to put that one. There we go. What do you think of that idea? I think everyone might be looking. Aha, yes, there we go. Gail says, excellent. We've got love. It really does, Kitty, opens up the door to using it for anything. So it looks like people are fantastic, loving these ideas. Okay. Um, okay. It is a, a quite great way to kind of create a more um, subjective, well, I'm not sure whether it's subjective or objective. It's obviously subjective to the client who's actually filling out the scores. Um, but it does allow you by filling out those scores and putting them on a piece of paper. And this is why I love to do, um, all our coaching tools are paper-based because I think it gets people out of their head. And when you write something down on a piece of paper and then you, it's like you get a little bit of distance from it. It's helps you get some perspective. Okay, so the last um, method that I'm going to share with you today, the last way I like to use that, well, it's actually two, um, but it's setting more meaningful goals. So the very easiest way to use the wheel of life to set more meaningful goals is simply to score a wheel and then where they have low scores, that is an area obviously where they could raise their score and set a goal around it. So that's the easiest way. And that's what I would do with every brand new client is just to do a wheel and see where the low scores are and where the mid scores are and look at creating goals around those areas. But this is a little bit more complicated than the other, the other methods I've chosen, but it's, it's a very powerful um, way to use the wheel. And to do this, I'm just going to fill out this little one here, um, the life balance categories here. So these are the categories that we would see on a wheel of life. And imagine your client has a set of goals, but it, they need to um, prioritize those goals. Or perhaps as a coach, you have an agenda. You see them going after a lot of goals that perhaps aren't going to um, make them truly happy in life. And you want to help them un create more meaningful goals. If your client had, so what you do is you take their goals and you give them a score according to each of the life balance categories. And does it raise their score in that area? So the best way to demonstrate this is to use an example. And I'm going to have an extreme example. Imagine you're lucky enough to have a goal, a client that, has, that can afford to buy a Ferrari. And that is their goal. They want to buy a Ferrari. So what you do is you go around each of the categories on the wheel and say, would buying a Ferrari improve their family and friends? Would it improve their score in family and friends on a, on a life balance wheel? Would it improve their relationship with their significant other? Would it improve their personal growth? Would it help them grow personally? Would it give them fun and leisure? It would definitely score a point for fun and leisure. Um, would it improve their home environment? Would it improve their career? Is it going to improve their money? I doubt it very much. Um, is it going to improve their health? And is it, and we've already done friends and family. So you go around the wheel and you give them a score for each area that it improves. Then you take another goal and I'm going to use an opposite kind of goal to give you an example of how this works. What if they have another goal, which is to be a good partner or a good parent or a good friend? So now we go around the wheel and we say, would it improve their family and friends score? Would it improve their relationship with their significant other? Would it improve or grow them personally? 
Is it going to increase their fun and leisure? Is it going to boost their home environment? So you get how this goes, and you might find that while being a, buying a Ferrari scores one or two out of eight, being a good partner, parent, or friend actually scores them five or six out of eight. And you get to see how goals might be more meaningful if they choose something that raises their scores when we look at a balanced life, what makes up a balanced life. And a little tip just to make this a little bit more powerful, you can give them half, people, you can give people the option to give an area half a point, um, one point for an improvement and two points for a big improvement. And you can even get them to say, okay, actually it will decrease that area. You could even do a minus one. So I think this is really, really powerful. And I actually created a tool around this because I believe it's powerful, um, very powerful. And, I, and I've done this with a few clients who've had some real aha moments from doing this. So those are my four favorite ways to use the wheel of life. And I hope your brains are all fired out with um, ideas for how you could use the wheel. But what do you think? What do you think of that last one? I'm curious. Okay, and Brian says the fourth idea, this last one can be a massage to help a business understand the value of their company goals. Totally. Um, okay, so I am going to put you into breakout rooms. Now you have some ideas. Um, it's over to you. How will you use the wheel of life in your coaching practice? And if you don't already, um, how might you start using it? So I'm going to put you into groups of three-ish um, it's a nice number to ensure everyone gets heard. And I'd like you to start by introducing yourself briefly. I'd like you to share your name, the country you live in, and what kind of coach you are. So this isn't your elevator speech. This is, I'm a life coach, I'm an executive coach, I'm a retirement coach. So we're just trying to keep it quick and simple to give people a little placeholder. Um, I'd also like you to agree who's going to make some notes or be willing to share your ideas when we come back after the breakout rooms to share your ideas with a bigger group. So um, almost time for the fun part. What I want you to do is to share how you use the coaching wheel at the moment. And if you don't, what ideas you have for using the coaching wheel going forwards. And please make sure that in your groups, everyone shares something. I know we're coaches, so we're probably going to do that anyway. And remember that English may not be a first language for some people. So I'm going to give you a total of seven minutes to chat about the wheel of life and your ideas, two minutes for short introductions, and five minutes for chatting. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? Okay, I am opening all rooms. I will see you back here in about seven minutes. Hey, welcome back, everybody. So how was that? Type into the chat. How did you find that? Oh, yeah, great. Nice to share. Really interesting. It is nice to connect with new people. Fantastic. So it looks like you've all had some, oh, slightly too short. Yes, I agree. I would have loved to have given you like 15 minutes, but I'm trying to keep these sessions short. Um, that was my promise when I started these tools clinics, keeping them short. So, okay. And it's interesting. Someone said you have good different levels of use. So who wants to share how they use the wheel from their groups and breakouts? Who wants to unmute themselves and share? Um, what they what they learn okay Alejandra lovely please go yeah. ahead well um, there were three of us Jeff Janice and myself um, so I am a life coach I use it at the beginning uh, for setting goals and um, and that's it so I uh, I actually shared with my group that um, since stress is a big part of my client my niche um, I want to use it as a stress wheel and then um, as a progress wheel. And I love that uh, reverse, you know, uh, deconstructing the goal and just going back to the wheel once you have the goal, just to see how much it impacts your life. Uh, Jeff mentioned that he uses it within his business coaching as a tool, you know, for um, setting the goals. And he, found, he finds uh, super useful the progress part of it. Uh, so that they can actually see how, you know, how they are succeeding and how it's totally worth doing this. 
And then Janice, who is actually getting uh, her certification right now, she's choosing to not use it with everybody because she's just she's in the process of getting practice clients. So she's using different tools with people just to see which one, you know, works in different ways. So she's practicing her will. And um, but mainly when she's she mentioned at least what I understood is that uh, when they are not very clear on their goals, then she uses the wheel of life to bring more clarity to go like, okay, let's do this. That's great. That's a great range of ways of using the wheel, Alejandra. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone Thank else you. who, or I should say who else um, wants to I'll share? Okay. I'll jump in for our group representing uh, the UK, Canada and Ghana. <laughs> oh, lovely. And um, we talked about different uses of it. Two of us are sort of career transition life coaches. Another is an internal coach in a bank. And I have personally have not used it a lot, um, but I can certainly see the applicability. And I'm going to try and incorporate it into a course I'm doing in two weeks. I like that. Yeah. So Yeah. On change management. I like the examples provided of stress management and, what are the eight things? So I think there's a lot of utility here. And we really appreciated the simplicity of it and thought maybe we've dismissed it because it's too simple. But in fact, that's the, that's the, the key to it, I think. I think that's a very good point, Joan. I think it is so simple and it's just a visual and it's just you can, oh, so many ways you can use it. Uh -huh. So I'm excited to hear that you've been, yeah, interested to yeah, use it more. So glad we showed up to have this chat. Oh, lovely. Now, someone else raised their hand and, and they maybe have disappeared off the screen here. Um, someone raised their hand to share and I can't see their hand raised anymore. Um, in fact, I can't see them in the room anymore. So, oh, Sally, it was Sally. Hi, Sally. Would you like to share what your group learned or shared? Yeah. Oh, might need to turn yourself up a little bit there. I don't know if it's just me. Very quiet. It seems that all three of us had problems with our Wi-Fi, so I'm trying. That's um, better when you lean forwards. Okay, jolly good. Okay, so um, there were three of us, all three different levels, which is quite nice. Um, I have been in coaching for a couple of years now, um, coming out of corporate background. We, um, I was together with Par Parvati, I'm sorry, Parvati, if I pronounced that wrong who is um, a relatively new coach, and then Emily, who is starting towards being a coach. Um, and it's actually quite interesting that all three of us like the use of this. I have used it quite a bit. Um, Parvati will use it, and Emily is actually going to use it tomorrow in a coaching in her training. So that's great. Um, how I like to use it is um, in career coaching, um, as I said, to match and balances and, and fill gaps. So what I do is I get my coachee to identify the areas that are important within their career. I will do a now. Um, I will then do one for two months' time, so what they desire and then their outcome, and measure it as we go along. Um, where there are imbalances, obviously we can then set goals to, um, to sort those imbalances out. And what's really nice is also if you're totally transitioning out of a career, I mean, basically going on your own and setting up a new business. This is a really nice thing to break it down into small chunks so that it doesn't become um, overbearing or um, overwhelming. So you will look at it as in the now, in the moment, what you can control and you can work on those, but you're aware of what you need to address down the line. And as you go down the line, you address those. Um, so when it comes to the time that you're ready to launch your new business or your new career, you're not feeling overwhelmed with everything, all the different steps that you have to do to get there. Um, and that's basically how I use it. I love that, Sally. I particularly love the fact that you said how we are now and you added a little element, which is where you want to be rather than just a vague, let's just improve the score. You're like, okay, I'm maybe a three and I want to be a six in two months. And that gives you a very specific kind of feeling of what you're going to do and, and the actions you could take. Um, so yeah, I love that. That was great. Thank you. Okay, so we are. We need to move on here to keep ourselves on time. Um, that was some great ideas. That was so much fun to hear from you. So before we go into some sort of general questions, 
we have a challenge, uh, a really good challenge. And that is, can anyone think of a situation where we can't use the wheel? Um, a blank wheel or a wheel. Now, to be clear, this is not a counseling or therapy issue. This has to be something we would actually coach someone around. Um, so see if we can type into the chat if there's an issue with a client that you think you couldn't use the wheel of life for. I'm just going to have to ponder for a moment there. I think it would depend what kind of coaching, sorry, who. I think there was a lady with me as well in the room. She left, I think, cardio. She said she do embodied coaching. Embodied so she, coaching. So she don't really use it. And I said, I'm also tra training clean language. So, of course, we don't use it. Whether you're doing systemic, yeah, you don't, you don't use it because it's at, the content is actually a metaphor. So it depends on what the client say. You, you actually develop their metaphor. So the way of life doesn't really come in. Come yeah. into it. Okay, so there's a challenge. So the embodied coaching, yeah. I can already think you've got eight. So I know embodied coaching, you've got a blank wheel. Um, and perhaps you're feeling a bit fuzzy about your goals. But you could label eight parts of the body where signs of stress would show up. So for example, I know when I'm stressed or anxious, I get a tight throat, I might get a heavy feeling on my chest or sinking feeling in my stomach shoulders are up, jaws tight, grinding the jaw. And you could put those around a wheel and mm -hmm. say in a specific situation, um, or if you want to kind of work on connecting with yourself more, you could score the wheel according to those eight areas where you feel it in your body. So there's a fun way of just um, eight parts of the body where you would feel stress, um, or eight parts of the body that you perhaps don't feel. Because I know with embodied coaching, it's we're often in our heads we're sort of stuck here and what you want to do is get people into their bodies so hands and feet are great because they're extremities but i want to feel my knees i want to feel my shoulders so it's a bit of a stretch does anyone have any other ideas for embodied coaching and using a wheel i can type in the chat um Oh, interesting. Alejandra says she tries to stay away from the wheel with both hardcore perfectionists and with people with anxiety. So that's an interesting one. Um, perfectionists, um, you could come up with eight ways that perfection makes life challenging for you. So if you're a perfectionist, where does perfection get in the way? It might make you tired because you worry about things. It might make you stressed. It might make you late. It might mean um, that people see you as a perfectionist. So you could come up with eight negative ways that, that perfection impacts your life and then score those and see about how you could improve them. Um, and it was interesting, Aries, because you said um, you do the clean language, which I find fascinating. I haven't done much with that, but I am fascinated by um, metaphor and in particular hero's journey. And so that is, a, that is the big metaphor, the hero's journey of life, of, of growing and developing and going through sort of pain and suffering and figuring out what that elixir and that special learning that we bring back from that um, journey and that challenge that we go on. So how could we use a wheel in um, metaphor? Ah. Yeah, I think if you if you're talking about metaphor and wheel, of course you can do whatever you want. I'm just saying in clean itself, you don't use any of these tools. Tools because is is a very free flow thing. So the if you're familiar with NLP, you're familiar with this this called modeling. You basically model after your client. And when they come up with, I mean, the more experienced you are, you kind of listen to metaphor there are metaphor that is very obvious like you say journey hero the metaphor that is very subtle which is the preposition yeah and you can ask them that so it's quite different and there's this thing about space clean space you're tapping into the space so do you want to 
put your space into a into a paper. I mean, yeah, it, it can be. So I think it depends on really what you want to do. Where and you how. are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see. So for those of you who don't know, I don't know much about clean language, but it is interesting. It's very much following the client's metaphor and using their language and the metaphors that they use to see a situation. And I've actually done this with clients in, in my early days. I remember I had a client who felt like she was boxed in and I said, well, is it a room or is it something else? And we eventually got to this place where she had a window and she opened the curtains and then she could see something different. So playing with metaphor is a way of. So what I'm thinking with a wheel then in terms of clean language, if that's your specialty, you could use it as a homework to explore ways of using a metaphor or if they feel stuck, like eight ways they could get unstuck. So you could give it as homework um, if you use um, the wheel in a sort of clean language maybe not in a session where you have to be so finely attuned to their words and their metaphors, but it could definitely be homework to explore a metaphor more deeply. Okay. Um, so I would love to allow time for questions. Does anyone have any, I'm just going to, I see we've got three new messages in the chat here. Um, oh, Jeff says eight ways to deal with difficult emotions. So that's another, you know, if you have um, a way of brainstorming ideas to come up with difficult emotions. So, any questions? What questions do we have, suggestions, ideas that have come up for you that you might like to share with the group? I would love to just ask a question of the group and go, what do you think about change management? What could those eight things be? Or how could you use it in approaching change management? I'm going to let See if anyone has anything to say. Collective wisdom in the room. Collective wisdom. And there is so much. Yeah. I Thanks, think everybody. Change management depends, again, whether you, you are coming together as a team or you're basically you're coming from a PM perspective or a BA perspective. It will be different, right? But if overall, there's always a timeline, there's always a client, there's, yeah. So I, I would say Will is really a versatile tool. You can use it for anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. that. But you, you still have to define what are the eight, or you can even put it to six. I've tried doing six before, or you can do it with eight. But it's really versatile. You can do it with anything. I have okay, some lovely suggestions in the chat, too, too. So thank you, everyone. Yes, I, I noticed that Svetlana has suggested like eight resources you would need for the change. I know. Eight can priorities or, that? yeah, eight values of the company. So you could put those on a wheel. Um, I know team building, often when you're going through change, it's, it's important to come together as a team. So the values for the team to focus on as they go through the change, that's the one that came up for me. Um, any other questions? Any other suggestions for Joan about how to use a wheel for change management or any other questions in general? I could share a couple of other, oh, we've got two new messages here. Let's just have a look here. The feelings that let you know you are moving forwards. So that's something you could label. Eight measures of success. Oh, I like that one, Alejandra. Yes. How will we know we have succeeded? What are the eight measures? And that's incredibly flexible. So no matter what your client's goal is, that could work. And it, that would also be really great, Alejandra, with, Alejandra, with um, especially fuzzy goals, um, I would sometimes often actually have clients who came to coaching with a goal of, I just want to be happier. I'm not happy. And of course, how do you measure that? The only way you can really measure that is through sort of feeling like a gut feel. So I would get them to score how happy they were right now out of 10. And then we'd revisit that every so often. But to come up with eight measures, how would you know you're happy? Let's come up with eight ways that you would know that you are happy and put those around a wheel. And then we can score that now and score that in a few months time. What do you do if your client doesn't have a printer? Well, you could always um, send them a wheel in the mail. People love getting stuff in the mail. You could send them a few blank wheels to play with. Um, they can also draw it. And I do this a lot. I've done this a lot because in the beginning, before Zoom, we used to do phone coaching, telecoaching. So you just get them to draw a wheel and you get them to divide it into four and then half those. So you divide it into eight. And that's it. That's how simple and powerful it is. You can just have them drawing it on a piece of paper. Super easy. Going through a divorce. Um, I just saw a question about how to use a wheel to go into divorce. So eight ways 
for them to stay calm or for them to reduce their stress during a divorce, eight actions they can take to take control of their life during the divorce, eight actions um, or eight areas that are super important to them to connect to during a divorce. Like I want to make sure that my children, if you have them go first, it could be children first, my finances are safe, that I have, you know, that, that my home is, um, the home environment is good. So you could, there are all sorts of ways to use it during a divorce um, with divorce coaching. Um, Let's see what else we have. A coach uses a wheel to check our level. Ooh, I like that, Kitty. Using a wheel to check how you're doing in regard to the ICF core competencies. Now, I know, obviously, there's more than eight core competencies. So maybe the eight core competencies that you really need, you know you need to work on to get your ACC or your PCC or your MCC. So you could pick eight or you could divide one of the wheels up and into two and then you could have 10 or 12 um, yeah, and score yourself. How are you doing against that competency and coming up with an action plan for each one? Someone with imposter syndrome or self-doubt, that's a great question. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to put this one to the group as well, but if you have someone with imposter syndrome coming up with eight successes, things that they've achieved in their lives or things that they have contributed to. So I do this as a strength question. What have you been a part of that, um, what did you help? So the question is, I'm trying to remember the question now, it's, it's, but it's a question about asking them, where did they contribute to something? Something they were a part of that would not have been as successful as it was if they hadn't been involved in it. So really looking for them to identify where they con contributed something and really made a big difference. So coming up with evidence, could be um, one way to deal with imposter syndrome or self-doubt. And another thing is to come up with eight of their strengths, to identify eight strengths and look at ways to boost those strengths. So for each strength they come up with, um, measure it out of 10 and, and how, how could they improve that strength? How could they strengthen or boost it? Does anyone else have any other ideas for using a wheel for imposter syndrome or self-doubt? Joan. Oh, do I look, you look like you're going to say something? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I had an idea actually for the imposter syndrome. Another one, which is um, they could use it. What things are they certain around? Like when it comes to whatever they're experiencing doubt around in their life, or the area of life perhaps you're focusing on coaching them around. What are they certain of? That makes me think of Oprah and her. Um, what is it she says? Things I know for sure. So they could write down eight things they know for sure. Change often leaves people feeling they need to belong. So what would make them feel included? Um, okay. When they feel confident and what brings them joy. So that, that would be great for imposter syndrome as well. Feeling confident and what brings you joy. Okay. I think, are there any final questions before we wrap up here? I maybe should have allowed an hour for this. We have so many ideas. Okay, no final questions. Um, oh, do we have any Spanish speaking? Does anyone have any Spanish speaking clients? Just a quick question. Um, because we actually do have a Spanish Wheel of Life if anyone is interested and it's free. So um, I'll ask Michaela to put that into the chat there. Okay, so as always, we have a tools clinic special. Um, I'm just going to skip ahead here. Um, just so, oh, this was, we've already done this. <laughs> um, so, uh, we have a tools click special. The blank wheel is in the life coaching toolkit and, um, they are free, but the wheel of life is also in the coaching welcome packet here. So these are actually on special right now. And, um, just because you've made the effort to attend or listen to this, we are giving you an extra 10% off that. So the coupon code's included in the link there that Michaela's putting in the chat. So as always, a special for attending and listening to the uh, Tools Clinic here. And I guess it's thank you time. A huge thank you to Michaela for her support today and to you all for attending and sharing yourselves and your ideas so generously. Um, the recording will be sent out in the newsletter and I'll also put the slides in there 
um, and do watch for the super th quick three questions, which will just the survey at the end. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for attending. That was so much fun. Um, the wheel, the best coaching tool, the best, most flexible, most adaptable, most powerful coaching tool there is. Okay, thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your week and wishing you happiness and health. Bye.